Okay, 2016, for some reason, we have a, a surge of Westerns coming out. Mm. So a lot of people think Westerns kind of went away, but 2016, we had a lot of Westerns. And I'll just name them off. We have a remake of Magnificent Seven, mm. Brimstone, The Duel with Woody Harrelson. Awesome. We have Boonville Redemption, The Legend of Ben Hall, um, Trey Dead, Stagecoach, Outlaw and the Angels, Road to Hell, The Dead Seven, that's Zombies and Cowboys, if oh, you ever got that. Okay. And then we have a TV movie, which is JL Family Ranch. Mm. And this is another one that came out in 2016. So we have a really kind of a weird upsurge of it's funny westerns in 2016. This was shot before the Magnificent Seven remake, which featured Ethan Hawke, but released uh, after. So, and that's how usually how independent Sometimes that happens go. that way. Right? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's interesting that westerns are like horror movies, I think. They're always there. It's just how much in the public consciousness are they? And and what kind of westerns? Because we've got, well, I would say, like your, your black and white, your John Fords. Yep. And then I would say your like spaghetti westerns. And then we also had what was kind of in the 80s where it was kind of like uh, the Brat Pack doing western movies. And now we get to, young I guns, think, to, right. yeah, Young Guns and yeah. such. And now we get to today, which is, I think, the, um, the bloody, mean-spirited westerns. Things like Bone Tomahawk and like the movies that like really embrace like how awful it was to be alive during these times. Uh, another one I want to cite that was my best picture of the year for 2016, Hell in High Water. I regard that as a western. That is definitely it's kind western. of a modern it's western. Elevated western. Elevated <laughs> western. <laughs> right. We use, we'll keep using that term from now on. It's 2020's new word. Elevated. Yeah. Yeah. So we are gonna uh, we're gonna suit up, boot up. Definitely not an elevated old western. This one. Yeah. We're gonna get a little de elevated. We're gonna dig down in the dirt and we're gonna check out the Valley of Violence. Welcome back to the show. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothy from Goat Film Reviews. I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for finding us. And for a lot of fans, thank you for to continue to support the show. You can follow the show on Twitter and on Instagram. We do have a Patreon. Check that out for some great, uh, to tell us what to do and some great deals. And if you want to continue to support some, we like 2016, a lot of Westerns, you can tell us, <laughs> join the Patreon and tell us a little more movies that I just cited to do. Today we're going to talk about a uh, Western that I completely didn't know about. Mm. When you yeah. mentioned it, I was like, what? So I got the bargain bin. So. Yeah! <laughs> this is a rarity that I've so, seen a movie that, this is a movie to pick that I haven't seen yet. Yeah, so in, in a valley of violence, uh, Paul, a drifter with a dark past, and his dog, Abby, are making their way to Mexico. But a seemingly innocent stop in the town of Denton yeah. leads to an altercation with the obnoxious and hot-headed local, Gilly Martin, and his posse. When Gilly and his men take their vendetta too far, it sends Paul into a violent rage as he returns to town with a taste for vengeance. So beginning with this, Burn Gorman, for some reason on film, just gets beat up by everybody. <laughs> and yet and he's, he's, un got <laughs> he's unfazed in Pacific Rim, but everywhere else he's getting his, his butt whooped. Yeah, Dark Knight <laughs> Rises, he's you know, in court. Yeah, yep. and, uh, doesn't end too well in Game of Thrones. Either, doesn't end so. in Game of Thrones too well. But then in this one, yeah, he gets shot. So I think it's almost like he's put him in there and it's like, it's Burn Gorman. He's just going to get through the ringer. What I like is that he gets he gets himself whooped in the beginning of the movie and we're like, well, that was an interesting scene. We're not going to see him again. And then we do. That, that, that. <laughs> so, right, I think, uh, how did this movie get started? Ty West is like, just approached Bluehouse and said, I'm going to put Ethan Hawke into a Western. And Ethan's like, yeah, we really want always wanted to do one. Is that so it's a bit of an interesting idea, actually, because uh, uh, Ethan Hawke made The Purge with, with Jason Blum and Blumhouse. During right. filming, he didn't have a place to stay. He stayed with Jason Blum in his house. And they tended to watch a lot of westerns. Both making horror movies, both like watching westerns during the day, and it kind of came to this thing where they both realized they had a love for it, but they hadn't actually delved and worked in that area before. So decided to make a western. Now at the okay. same time, Ty West was kind of mulling over this idea, and he had actually thought I would really love to make a western with Ethan Hawke, and it just happened these two guys coalesced. Uh, I don't think Ty West had worked with Blumhouse on his previous features, so this was kind of just like an accident perfection is that he found the actor he wanted, they found the genre they wanted, and they got to make a, a very, I would say like a, an homage to like the spaghetti westerns of it all, but kind of with a, an absurdist kind of tongue-in-cheek attitude. Yeah, is it a comedy? I don't know. Yeah. There's some comedic things in there, there's some really weird things in there, some of them work for me and some of them don't. I like the yeah, fact absolutely. that the Tubby character gets his say at the end, I'm not stop calling me Tubby. And we know what's going to happen after he makes that declaration. Oh yeah. We know it's I, it's yeah. almost like, I think it, I think that's the idea that we're supposed to know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. There's some comedic moments that worked and some ones that didn't. And there's some action moments that worked and there's a couple that didn't. It's, it's not a perfect movie, no. 
but I would be lying if I said that I didn't enjoy watching this John Wick in the desert. It's kind. Of, <laughs> yes. We're gonna talk about it because if you didn't know, um, Ethan Hawke's character has a dog, mm-hmm. and we lose the dog. But that's one of the things I'm frustrated because we talk about with your criticism with movies, show where you're winning mm-hmm. and keep that. And that's where you're really winning. That's the most memorable the thing. The dog is, is the best actor in the movie. It's the right. best performance. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to go in this house. The dog's almost like, oh, please. Not. Yeah. yeah. I think that it's weird to say that the chemistry between Ethan Hawke and that dog is so wonderful. I wish um, It's an incredible it uh, animal be. performance. Because you could go, you could, if you keep the dog, you can go on a long more adventures of Ethan Hawke and the lone, it's the lone cub. It's the cub and the lone Yeah, ranger. except it's more of an actual cub this time. <laughs> right. Cub and the Lone Guy. Oh, the it's they the do in the Mandalorian. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's a format that works. I can, really like how the dog is utilized in the story, but I, again, I would be lying if I said that the best interactions with the characters in the film aren't in the first half. Yeah. And that's because the the last half of the film is very much a a. It's almost like a finale that takes up half the movie because at that point, like once we hit our and our that's I'm a little point, more exhausted by the time you get there. I think it takes a little bit too long yeah. uh, in that ending, and, and there's a couple choices that didn't work as well. But I like that that there's a showdown in the town, and that he's kind of a hunter. You know, he's he's taken, he's John Wick, but he's he's more calculated moving through it. Ty West referred to the film as a revenge movie where all the characters are too dumb to succeed, and I kind of I buy into that conceit. Uh, it, it, when I watched this movie for the first time, I really had an inkling of another uh, western movie, uh, Forty Guns, with uh, Sam Fuller, mm. which is very much uh, a guy gets arrested. And then his brother and sister is like, what the hell, we're get him out of town. And then the whole shootout and everything. And it's a bunch of really rustic, and I don't even consider 40 Guns almost, it's not really a Western, even though it's a Western look, but it yeah. doesn't feel like a Western. Even though this movie is very much like a, almost a revenge town, mm-hmm. but even though it's almost like a costume, you just make, oh, forget, this is a Western. Oh, yeah. So you can put this story anywhere, kind of an urban city. John Wick's coming It, it yeah. does, yeah. yeah. It comes John- up in a couple different places. Yeah. What I really... My biggest frustration with the movie is is right in the, the title. We are talking about a place that is referred to, and, and, and Gilly calls it that. James Ransom calls it a valley of violence. That's what we refer to this town and this yeah. area. But the problem is, there's no violence that's not attributed to the main characters. And like, it's no not t- that... Yeah, it's, like, it's a small town. It's the same town that they used for uh, Silverado and A Million Ways to Die in the West. It's the same town okay. location for that. It's great I don't location. mind that it's a small location. It's a small town. Yeah. But my problem with it is that you, you credit this thing as it's got an iconic name, the Valley of Violence. Like, yeah. it's got to be really violent. And as far as I can tell, there's like eight people living there. Right. And, and five of them are Where's violent. Where's the town? Like, this is one where, you guys will hate me for bringing this up, I feel like the recent Halloween film did a really great job of making Haddonfield a character. That town is a character with trauma. Like, you feel like this town has dealt with a killer for 40 years. This movie, the town of Denton, doesn't feel like a character, and it's described as such. Exactly. It's described as a, a town with character. This describes uh, the town in Back to Future Part 3. That's a town of... That's a There's more violence. violence than that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think that's my, my frustrating part about it, is that this movie feels like it was a short story, and what I wanted was a novel. I wanted the town. I wanted the, the people that lived in the town. Even if this is the main story that we're following, I don't feel like the town exists except right. for to serve this one tale. And that's frustrating because the town has this mythic description. It's a bad place to be, but and it's then not you get, Deadwood. <laughs> and, then you get, and you get there and you're like, well, where the hell is everybody? Yeah. yeah. It's almost like the violence is at, af- came already. If we yeah. missed it. Yeah, we're seeing the aftermath or the pre-math. Um, and and that's why I understand. I would like a desolate town where only three people. We get that with uh, the diehard you know, Bruce Willis, yeah. that western, uh, the, with a like two, <laughs> remake of Ujibel. Yeah. Where um, but the problem with that, though, is that that's a, okay, that's a, it's a desolate town. It's a desolate place, but we it, it serves the story that way. This is yeah. a town that is sold on a mythic status. And get, I, agree, I agree with you. Right? That's why you I feel like... Sold, you uh, get, like it's almost a spate and switch. Yeah, I feel like Tessa Farmiga... I, I understand why she wants to get out of that town. There's only like four people there, and I wouldn't want to bet any of them. Hey, Karen Gillan is <laughs> shouting at you the entire time. Yeah, yeah, you got your sister shouting at you. You got a bunch of dirt bags hanging out, and you got a bartender that's too old to marry. So I can understand yeah. why she wants to get out of the town. Right, and then of course the two, you know, their sisters, and they're going to be fighting. Yeah. So it's all that. I think that's what the whole thing is. There's not 
smooth relationship. Everybody's in friction with each other. Mm. But you do have a boyfriend girlfriend with Karen Gillian in mm. character and Gilly. It just doesn't feel like it's. You don't convince me. I think the problem is that we don't get enough. T- again, don't building time. in the world, we don't get time with yeah. uh, uh, Karen Gillan's Ellen and Gilly. Uh, we don't get enough time oh, to see their relationship, uh, either prior to or in the aftermath. We only see her kind of like, "What happened? Oh, you punched my my boyfriend. Oh, I'm so pissed." And like that's the introduction of the character, but we don't really build that relationship at all. Um, it's kind of like the relationship with. Um yeah, Karen Gurley in, in like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and mm. Avengers, yeah, she, and her sister. But that that that's feels far like more violent. That's yeah, more, more convincing. That feels like a, a relationship that is built very well in the first movie, and then mm. we're just blessed that we get to see that relationship Constantly continue with, to build. Yeah. Uh, but sure. this is a case where yeah, we don't really see the the sisterhood. We see that more than the relationship with the boyfriend, but we don't see her really building with anyone. And that's what goes back to that. I wish this movie was a novel instead of a short story. And I think if you want to do like Valley of Violence, mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of people around, just destroy the town, break, yeah, make glass, this, make this doors violence. Don't work. You know, yeah. like going back to a famous Willem Dafoe line, "There's a firefight." Like make this I think a if, moment. I think it was like if you only have a cast and not even uh, uh, extras on set, you just didn't have a cast. Like go around just wreck stuff, yeah, and sh- gunshots Blow everywhere. Some buildings up, like build some buildings. The doors don't work. Show that violence is actually part of the nature of this town. Yeah. And when you're coming in, you're like, "Oh my god, what the hell happened?" Well, it was a brawl. This is, yeah, this is what happens, and you don't want to stay. Yeah. So I think this, if you do the set direction, which I do, I like the location. It's very well, great location. Yeah. And you have some ideas to, you have some shootouts and everything. You, you had the opportunity to blow some stuff. Mm-hmm. Show it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's have a few things that I think really worked in the movie. I really like Ethan Hawke. I really think he was great. Yeah, he movie. surprised me. I didn't think it was going to um, work. And I, I now like knowing that he was trying to get a Western made, and then happened to get two in one year is good for him. You know, he he found something he hadn't done much before, and he got a chance to do it. I think he was great. I think his relationship with the dog was great. Um, I dug John Travolta as the marshal. He did. I did. I like that he wasn't the main character, but he kind of had to become the main character. He's almost an you know? apology for the violence. Almost yeah. like I, you know, almost like I can't be soft, but I am soft. Get the hell out of town. Like, you know. he's trying to avoid it at every turn, and then he realizes, like, there's no avoiding it. It's kind of like Road to Redemption. Yeah. Of Paul Newman's character. Oh, yeah. He's awful. He's a head of the mob, but his son's wrecking everything, and he's almost like, a, I know he's awful, but he's my son. Yeah. I get that a and lot. And very much uh, going back to even even John Wick, you know, the, the dirtbag kid causes the problem, and now John Wick is taking on the entire Russian mob, and then we've got our head guy who's just like, well, he's my son, I have to defend him, but man, I really wish he hadn't done this. So I like that he's pulled into it and realizes that there's no good way out and I'm just going to have to kill this guy. And that's that's his, his storyline. I think that was really good. I don't like his final scene in the movie. I don't like the final scene in the movie. Yeah, there, there's something about that final climactic moment that doesn't feel climactic. It feels... I'm not sure if it was intentionally supposed to be a joke or not. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's um, just, I think it's supposed to be... I think what Ty West is trying to do, and I wrote in my notes, it's almost like... How Paul Verhoeven was able to do in his movies like Robocop and Starship Troopers. You buy into the farceness and the ridiculousness, but you're convinced of the action as well. Oh, like where the satire is just as important as the, the realism. Yes. Yeah. When you shoot a raper, rapist in, the, the, in his yeah. crotch, we're all laughing and it's very violent, but also we're laughing. And I think that's what Ty West is trying to pull off with this movie is the farceness of it, but also trying to have a good time making fun of it as well. Mm. And it just doesn't pull off as yeah wreck the town if he's if I, yeah yeah do it do it Paul Vero would uh, take a machine gun to the place and because I really I actually I thought Paul Ran- or uh, James Ransone I thought was pretty solid as, as Gilly um, and part and of it is that really I, awful person I didn't expect to think he could pull off being evil because I'm aware of James Ransone from It Chapter 2 he played one of the adult kids in the Losers Club and he played one that was kind of like yeah. he played the one that was afraid of getting sick and so it's like he's a very like weak person in that movie. I didn't think he could pull off being a malicious dirtbag, yeah. and he does pretty well. I would have been a little more convinced, and this is just me, if they just switched Karen Gillian and her characters. Okay. I would have thought. I think that was more enticing. I think Karen Gillian and Ethan probably had a better chemistry together, 
and sh the other one, uh, what's her, T Teresa? Tessa Farmiga, yeah. She would be the loud one. I think she would have opportunity to be the loud character. I would have switched them. And the problem with it is, I, I'm not sure if the intention is to show him as a father figure to her or as a romantic figure, yeah. but if you're going for a romantic figure, I feel like I feel more comfortable with it being Karen Gillan. I feel like Tessa Farmiga tends to play young. You know, yeah. she she was in American Horror It convinced Story. me that why she liked her character. Yeah, was like, like she could maybe swoon on him, but and the Karen, feels... Karen, the older one, like, hey, grow up a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a confusing choice of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's the only I, casting points I would switch those. And one other thing I would have done as well is I feel like we didn't give enough to Toby Huss. Toby Huss uh, is the the bald uh, henchman, if you will, the one that gets up on the roof with him. Um, Toby Huss has done some great work in recently Cop Shop. I do like he's that done a lot of that kind of stuff. I he's, do like the roof scene. Yeah, but he's he's one of those guys. He can play hard edged really well, and we don't know that because he plays comedy really well too. He's a very effective character actor that doesn't have a lot to do, but uh, in this movie, like every time he's on screen, I buy him because he's the henchman that he's the one who's like, we shouldn't be doing this, but he also knows I'm in too deep. Yeah. I have to now. And he's a Which you get in Robocop. You know, yeah. The gangs are like, we're, we're going to die. Yeah. yeah. And then you have uh, Larry Fessenden, the uh, cult director, playing our heavy set henchman who gets in the bathtub and doesn't get out. Uh, Larry Fessenden is one of those guys that you bring into your movie because he likes to die on film yeah. and you just want to make sure it's effective. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you do get a backstory about Ethan Hawke's character and mm -hmm. why he's like this and. You know, well, this guy is a really clever killer. Well, you just slice somebody in the bathtub. I mean, that's just... There's really... Yeah. <laughs> that's, don't, he's not a genius assassin. He just approached a guy behind him. But, yeah. Well, so I, it, it goes back to Ty West's choice of it's a revenge tale where all the characters are too dumb to succeed. Yeah. And, and I think if Ethan Hawke had come up against a little bit more resistance um, in, his, in his hunting, he somebody his out. more childish choices might have made sense. I would like... That's another thing about the writing. I think you need somebody to match Ethan Hawke's character. And we don't yeah. get that. You just think that he could just come in and take over the town. Yep. You need somebody... Of, I'm hoping John Travolta would have been... The, but he's almost an apology of to his son. John Travolta gets to the line of it. Yeah. Like, all he needs to do is step over the line to turn that character into an equal. But he gets to the line, and then the writing kind of forces him into a place of not going there. Hmm. Um, you know, Going back to our comparison with John Wick... Our, our Russian mob leader is that kind of character. We're like, John Wick is perceived as the, the boogeyman. He's the killer. He's the guy that we're like, he's almost the, he's the villain of the movie because he's coming in and he's going to slaughter a bunch of people. But we get to a point in John Wick where even John Wick is, is matched. And he gets put in the chair yeah. and he gets told, like, I'm going to have to kill you. I'm sorry. And that's the point in this movie that's missing. That's why I think there's a lot of elements in this movie. I overall think the movie was good. But there's okay. a lot of elements in the movie that I think it's on the cusp where it could be great. I'm just flowering above good. Mm. But I think, right, I think you, what we talk about writing is the problem with switchback. Yep. I think you need to sit down with Ty West and say, all right, you got to match character with Ethan Hawke. Mm -hmm. Keep the dog. You're winning with the dog. Yeah. You lost the dog, and then you kind of lost my interest. I think Lone Wolf and Cub is a great formula that would like to continue on with that. It almost feels like this movie would have made a better sequel. Because right. then we've come to know the dog. And I was hoping, like, if you know? we get the sunset of him and the dog right now, mm. yeah, on to the next adventure. You sold me. On to the next adventure, next town, and we'll cause some problems. I love that idea. That's kind of the Western kind of thing. Well, and having just recently watched my first John Wayne movie, Hondo, which features John Wayne, and he's got a dog sidekick, mm -hmm. and he, he treats the dog as I like, about that. he treats the dog as like, well, I don't, you know, he, he does his own thing. You don't need to feed him. He'll find food. And then we kind of get the, the juxtaposition, the complete reversal, that like Ethan Hawke sees this dog as like a brother. Like, he's, he's like, if this dog could ride a horse, they'd be riding next to me. You know, it's uh, a good introduction able to, to the see dog. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, and that's where you're winning, on right? That we talked about it. where you're winning in the film, keep it. That's where you're winning. Yeah. Even though that's not the, what you start with. I think Ty West is one of those filmmakers that could use a writing partner. And I'm not going to say that he can't write. I'm going to say that he could use a partner to help him rough some of the answer. edges. We always talk about in writer's group. You need somebody to answer to. Yeah. You can't just write it in a vacuum. Because I think his somebody. style is very strong. And if you look at movies like House of the Devil, which is a very strong style, but it kind of meanders in figuring out where the plot's going. The Innkeepers, very strong style, but it's a movie that can't juggle the tone of comedy versus horror. His, his best movie is The Sacrament. It's a found footage movie about a cult. 
that movie is fantastic. He hits the level of, of comedic tongue and the level of horror very well. And that's why I'm looking forward to his new movie, X, because I think he's getting to a point where all of those elements are clicking and he's making the right choices, but he does need someone to rough out the edges of his screenplay. Yeah. You just, we were talking about a writer's workshop. You need somebody to answer to. Yeah. You just, you know, I mean, think about this. If, if you look at the footage yeah. of George Lucas on the set of Empire, he's being told no a lot. If you look at footage of him... That's because it was his film teacher, Erwin, directing yeah. the movie, and it's but his teacher telling him... If you look at footage from behind the scenes of Phantom Menace, he's looking at images of Jar Jar Binks, and he says, I like this one, and he turns to the people around him and says, what do you think? And they all say, we think it's great. No. If you don't agree, tell them. It's better for them to hear the truth. Yeah. And I think that's a case and where... And you get fired. Yeah. But, and what the hell? But, yeah. but like this is something where a Jason Blum, I know he likes to be like hands off. He likes to let the, the visionaries get involved and do their thing. But you should have someone who can give that input and just say, I think it would work better doing this, and then let them make that choice. And like I said, it's a very simple solution. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have fun with it. Hey, we got a set. Let's blow it to hell. And yeah. then nobody else can use it. No one else will ever be able to use, use it. it. And, then I, and then you show a violence, but we have a good time blowing it to half to hell. And mm -hmm. then you keep the dog, and then you switch the two characters. I think you have a hell of a movie. You yeah. switch the two female characters, I think you have a great movie. But if there's one thing this movie did uh, is most notable for, it's it's not very well notable. People don't talk about it very much. No, but it's on Netflix. I had to like Google search, like search it um, yeah. for what happened at its South by Southwest premiere. Uh oh. This is a fun story. Yeah, right. I put it. On, we're going to end this thing on on this story because I think it's brilliant. At South by Southwest, the movie became very notable when it premiered because comedian Doug Benson was at the theater watching it and got very upset and pissed off that someone near him had his phone out, and he had a forced physical altercation where he dragged this guy out of the. Th the opening night screening because he was enjoying the movie so much and he couldn't stand that some guy was ruining it for him. Good job, that Doug. Yeah. The, we need Doug's more great. Doug Bensons in yeah. AMCs. Doug's <laughs> great to follow on Twitter. Too. <laughs> yeah. So if you're ever in a movie with Doug Benson, put the phone away and just pretend every movie you're at that Doug Benson is there watching over your shoulder because he probably <laughs> is. So anyway, Stole it out of his mind, which is great. So anyway, I'm yeah. positive on the movie. I'm going to give it a, a solid recommendation. It's not the best Western out there, but there's a lot of throwback to it. There's a lot of fun to be had in it, and I dig the movie over. I think it's lost in the shuffle. So many westerns that came out at the time for some reason, but I, right. But the choices, I, I'm gonna get a mild. It's good. Yeah, because I think you need to work on your writing for the character. I think you have a good concept. We've seen it before. Yep. I, you know, the lone wolf and cub formula works, and we talked about some other things that could work as well. Yeah. Yep. So overall, solid, solid, slight recommendations on our end. Um, it, it deserves to not be completely forgotten, but there's some things it could have done better. And now we want to know what you think about In a Valley of Violence. Uh, what's your What's your thoughts on director Ty West? Is this your favorite one of his movies? Do you prefer his horror outings? Do you prefer that terrible Cabin Fever sequel that he did really early? I learned that he spelled his name like Ty. <laughs> T-I-E, which is... All right. If he ever gets drunk in a bar, he'll be a Thai fighter. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> and his last name is West, so you have to make a Western. That's true. He would have made a samurai picture if his name was Thais. So. <laughs> that was my dad joke of the day. You're welcome, everyone. Good night, everybody. Um, <laughs> but if you enjoyed that dad joke, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you didn't enjoy that joke, give us a like anyway. And while you're down there, click that subscribe button so you never miss new episodes of our show, which airs episodes Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. we got all sorts of good stuff for you. And as Nick pointed out at the beginning of the episode, Go ahead and sacrifice one of those coffees every single month. Join the Patreon the links down in the description. For tiers as low as a dollar, you can get things like Picks with Kyle and Nick. You can check out some of our Patreon posts on there and get involved in the community more. Five dollars and up, though, you get part of our rotation of people that pick our episodes that we do every single month here on Kyle and Nick on Film. Um, from all of us at the show, you can find my film reviews at GoFilmReviews.com. Uh, you can find my podcast, the St. Paul Filmcast, anywhere you find podcasts. All right, so we're going to get out of this filming studio of violence. And, uh, and and try and defend ourselves. Does this mean that Ethan Hawke should have had a pet hawk in the movie? If Ty West was making a western, doesn't have some sequel. 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 